And on that note, I just got word that Spooty is ready, so let's go ahead and throw it up for the run. Take it away. All right. What's up, everyone? I'm Spooty, and I'm... I'm Zelo, and I've got Harukaze on the couch for support. Zelo has been glued to the couch for the past, like, 20 runs, so, you know, what's more? One, one more. Okay, so before we start, um, I just want to say how much I love how many people are here right now. Like, you guys, on, you guys are amazing. Guy. All that said, like, I, 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 love, I love you guys. I love the hype you're bringing, but... This game, in its entirety, is one giant audio cue. Um, we are playing Coda, which is the hardest character in the game. The, um, I mentioned in the inter interview a little bit ago, uh, the devs originally said that they thought she would be impossible. And not only are we saying that Coda is possible, we're saying it's possible to do her without picking up any items. And there are a lot of instant death conditions as a result, so I'm just gonna show you, like, if I touch gold, I die. If I miss a beat, I die. If I take any damage, I die. Like, everything and anything kills me. So I need you guys to be care uh, you know, make sure I can hear the audio uh, clear. And so uh, I want you to hold any major applause you might have for the ending. That said, I'll compromise with you guys because I don't want to completely kill the hype. So whenever I finish a floor, you are allowed one clap. <laughs> we'll, we'll practice right now before we start. Here, there, there, there's stairs at the top of this map I, I threw together. All right? Ready? Okay, That's good. good. <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys will sync up more as we, as we go on. But, all right, anyway, I think that's all I need to cover here, so... Uh, you might notice a little message in that map right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so... You guys ready to do the probably impossible? <laughs> all right. Here we go, in three, two, two one, one, go! go. So this is Crypt of the Necrodancer. It's a uh, rhythm roguelike where it's, it is turn-based, but all your uh, turns have to be made to the beat of the music. Uh, since we're playing Coda, uh, the hardest character in the game, we actually have three characters' properties rolled into one. We have the properties of Monk, the properties of Arya, and the properties of Bolt all together. So this, like you said before, he, can, he can't touch gold, he can't drop his beat, he's locked to the base dagger and can't change his weapons, which is irrelevant because this is low percent. Um, He's stuck at half a heart of health the entire time and will not be able to increase that. And everything's going to be made at double tempo. So this is extremely difficult. <laughs> it's like floor one does start pretty simple. Like each zone has its kind of its own theme. Uh, like the, we have this kind of cave theme for zone one where each zone is uh, three floors and then a boss fight. Uh, most of the enemies are not too threatening in uh, zone one, but it's gonna change very quickly as we get into later zones. These bats are yeah. awful. They're random. <laughs> yeah, most enemies in this game uh, follow very scripted movements, just depending on your own positions. But bats are the one random enemy, and we kind of have to dance around them in order to uh, be able to kill them safely. Yeah, you'll notice he's kind of dancing around a lot, uh, waiting for something to happen. Since we can't actually stop for a beat, since that would kill us, he'll kind of shuffle back and forth on two tiles for a while. And that's especially important in this category, since he doesn't have any kind of torch to increase his vision. So especially when he digs out a wall and gets the instant vision, he wants to back away to avoid any kind of hazard. <laughs> so Deep Blues is the first boss we're going to see. It's a chest-based boss. All the pieces... Oh, geez, that was a rough opening. <laughs> The night openings are very rare, and um, they're pretty hard to react to. So back to the start. This is a roguelike, so we go back to the start. New zone, uh, new floor layouts. Um, you know, that's just how it goes. Permadeath. Yep. It's okay. We get to see uh, some of the dire bats down there. Your favorite mini bosses, as I know from your streams. Yeah, dire bats are mini bosses. They are just bats with extra health. So, okay, that one played pretty nice. <laughs> Hey, you guys are getting it. <laughs> yeah, we, we've seen uh, Dire Bats just hover over piles of gold where you can't touch them for 40-plus beats or even longer. <laughs> it's 
really ridiculous. Hmm, okay. Gotta kill this blue slime. Yeah, since he's not able to touch the gold, the uh, gold management is really important during this run. He's gonna be killing... Ooh, <laughs> thought the monkey would sneak in there. Uh, he, he tries to drop the gold either in big piles on one tile or drop them in areas away from narrow pathways. That way he has room to maneuver and kill other enemies. Okay, there we go. Okay. Ah, it's getting there. <laughs> Yeah. Just to go into a little bit of low percent uh, while we're doing zone one again, um, low percent is defined in this game on the uh, pause menu. Um, you cannot pick up any items or activate any shrines. I believe the only um, exception to that is the shrine of sacrifice as long as you don't pick up any of the items it drops. And Deep Blue's won again. <laughs> like, the order in which these bosses come is random. He got a more favorable opening that time, so he can just kill the pawns before they promote and uh, just do cleanup on the rest of the arena. All right, that's zone one. <laughs> All right, into zone two. The layouts uh, get a little different depending on which zone you're in. Uh, for zone two, most of the... Um, what, it, what it tries to do is it gives you several pathways to start, and then the exit is usually in a direction opposite those pathways. So usually he'll just be digging the wall right behind him to get a fast track to the exit. But we're gonna be seeing uh, some more enemies like the Wind Mages, which can pull you straight onto gold if you're not careful. Uh, there's these slow moving golems, which can actually be very helpful in a few cases because Booty only has a level one shovel and he can't upgrade it. So he's not able to dig any, uh, any uh, anything other than basic walls. So we can use the golems or other enemies such as dragons to actually open up some passageways for him if he needs extra room. So Nightmare, pretty easy mini boss to deal with. Okay, for this wall. A, a pretty simple fight compared to the, most of the other bosses. There are very consistent strats for this. Um, I didn't mention this earlier, but for every uh, zone increase, like in Zone 2, we're fighting the second version of Fortissimo, and it just kind of keeps going with until you finish the run. And the different versions of the bosses uh, affect the different enemies uh, that can be in play, the amount of health the boss has. So he has to have different strats for each possible zone three. variation. This is Whoa. for... Oh, Swarm. Yeah, that can happen in Zone 3. You can have several enemies just rush you right at the beginning. And especially with fast-moving enemies like the Riders, they can swarm you and it gets messy real quick. Uh, you get access to more floor hazards around here, like the coals. You can move across coals okay, but if you stop on them for any reason, you will die. And, and we'll also be seeing ice in this zone, which he can't... Dog. <laughs> the The ice will make you slip and slide, and if you touch... If you make any kind of input while you're sliding on the ice, you will die. Yeah, this, the layout rules for Zone 3 are a bit similar to Zone 2, but the, the rooms are kind of more clumped together in weird ways, so it can be pretty difficult to navigate without a map or a torch. You can see navigating the map a little bit difficult. Uh, there are goblins that are that they like to chase you when you're moving away from them, and they'll run away from you when you move towards them. So he kind of throws the dagger to buffer his beat and just allow the the goblins some time to move without dropping his multiplier. Yeah, being able to uh, buffer your beat 
using walls or other enemies and obstacles, it's really essential for Coda since you're not able to just stop. Nice pin against the wall on the Banshee. Okay, we got Death Metal oh, 3. Death Metal 3. Ooh. This is like the, one of the hardest versions of him. Yeah, Death, <sighs> Death Metal always has nine health, but in this version of the fight, they're gonna be uh, Ice Beetles and Fire Beetles. This is also the fastest song in the game, clocking in at 175 BPM, double tempo is 350, which means I am tapping at almost six times a second. So I really need to uh, prepare on this. He'll be fine. The main strategy for this fight is to kill one of the beetles. And then since this is Death Metal 3, he normally tries to summon other enemies after the shield is gone. But Death Metal 3 has a enemy cap of three other enemies on the field. So he can't summon anymore as long as he keeps three of the beetles on the field. So he's just kind of kiting them around until Death Metal gets in more favorable positions to attack. Which is easier said than done. <laughs> He's also... Oh. oh, that's a fat finger. I just tapped right and okay. clinked against the wall. Oh. All right, well, unfortunately, I'd love to keep trying it from all the way from the start of the game, but um, we don't have time for that. So <laughs> I'm going to play the rest of the game out in single zones mode. For the most part, it's the same. Um, those are the ways it makes the game easier are irrelevant here um, because there's extra items every floor. We can't pick those up. Um, you get m more starting health. Coda ignores max health, so we still have the same half heart. Um, shops are cheaper. Again, we're not buying items. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, there's more. Yeah, like just most of the ways low percent or single zones mode are easier is easier is not relevant here. So. Yeah, if anything, it makes the run harder So because you have more items on the field and you can't move on those. So he just wanted to show you a harder run, guys. Yeah, totally, totally. The upside is um, now that the pressure of trying to do a, an, a legit all zones mode run is gone, um, I feel a little more comfortable to play a little more, more a little fancier. Oh, game just froze. Hello. That's never happened before. <laughs> I, I, I had to do it once, right? <laughs> um, Good job, Scooty. <laughs> if you're not crashing Step Mania, you're crashing Necker Dancer. Yeah, apparently. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh... I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm having a... Well, you guys can enjoy 3-2 while we're <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the sound check is amazing, so enjoy yeah. the... Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. All right, there, managed to close it. All right. Hey, uh, Spooty, can I get in a quick donation while you're working? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, because we have $1,000... <laughs> from Condor League. And they say, we're Rudy for Spooty. Spooty, thanks for always representing our community and Necrodancer so well. You have done so much for this community and we are so grateful and proud of you. Love from Alexis, Asher, Autoclaves, Elad, Will, and all of Condor. Oh, yeah, I got tons of donations, man. This has been... All right, let's see here. I have $10 from Jeth Rain. Good luck on the Coda low percent run. And I want everybody to clap with me after each words. I got four words here. Ready? We're Rudy for Spooty. Thank you. Man, my hands hurt now. I'm only used to doing one of those at a time. That's killing me. Uh, let's see, what do we got? We've got a... Wow, thank you for this one. $375 from Skype Crew. The Skype Crew sends well wishes, and I hope your butter allergies clear up soon, and good luck. Uh, runner's choice for the incentive. I've got a $35 donation here from Piku. Crypt of the Necrodancer and Dead Cells? My evening just got a lot better. 
Sprinkle some Cuphead at the end of it, and it'll be perfect. Thanks, AGDQ, Speedrunners, and the crowd for this wonderful event, and cheers from Spain. Hey, speaking of that, uh, you guys like Cuphead? You want some Cuphead later? Yeah. Uh, because we are $337 away from that. I mean, come on, it's right there. I've got a $150 donation here from Ekim Ekim70. Had to donate during Spooty's insanity. The Necrodancer community, community means so much to me, even though I don't always have time to be around. Thank you, Spooty, for organizing Crow and getting new people into the community. Good luck with the run, and in before Deep Blues 5. I don't know what that is, but it sounds uh, unpleasant. I have a $125 donation from Letica. Had to donate for Spooty. Good luck on the Coda Low Percent run. And then Centricity, thank you for that $35 donation. Been watching DDQ, GDQ for years, and this is one of my favorite runs ever. Great job. Can I get one more uh, single clap from the audience, please? Thank you. Y'all are good at that, you know. And then I've got a $100 donation here from Ronkley. Hey, Spooty and AGDQ, Ronkley here with an important message. It is imperative that we improve the world by impending the impairment of cancer. Who knew that an impatient purple imp, just imp on that one, who is imperiled by gold could be so impactful by helping to implode cancer's impending doom. Watch now as Spooty impresses with this probably impossible speed run. Sorry, not sorry. That was a good one. I've got a quick $5 donation here from Soraya. Hey, how you doing? So excited for Crypt of the Necrodancer. Best of luck to Spooty Biscuit and shout outs to Mr. Game and Shout, who always does an incredible job as host. Let's get one million. All right, well, that was good, but uh, you know, speaking of getting things, we just hit Cuphead! <laughs> I hope TMR's been warming up out there. I've seen him around here. I hope he's been working on it. All right, it looks like we're ready to get back in on this one. Spooty, I'm going to throw it back over to you, man. All right, thanks, everyone. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Hopefully, that's the uh, last we'll see of them. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right back into zone three. So we continue our adventures in uh, mist beats and butter allergies. <laughs> yeah, There's still a lot of really threatening monsters in zone three. Um, we didn't talk about the shove monsters at all, actually. The uh, shove. Oh. <laughs> the uh, shove monsters are exactly that. They just keep pushing you if you're not moving away from them. Uh, un and they don't actually damage you until you hit something that you can't traverse, like a wall or, or an obstacle. But they're deadly because they move on every beat. That's a double tap. Okay. <sighs> yeah, diamonds are fine in low percent because they're considered currency. So it's like picking up gold. 
Yeah, the diamonds are just used for the uh, in-game lobby shop, and uh, they don't exist in a normal all zones run anyways, so they don't invalidate, invalidate low percent. Layout to navigate there. The really tricky part about Zone Three is um, dealing with the ambushes. Like as you can see, <laughs> having the Banshee and the Rider stacked back to back with each other is a little scary. <laughs> yeah, Spooty's always doing a lot of checking to make. Sure... What? Oh. Game froze for a second there. I hope. Please, please let that be the last time. Because, yeah, obviously, if the game freezes, um, I'm just dying. Yeah, there's been some interesting ways you could die from uh, the game freezing or locking up for a bit. I've had a point where I was literally just stuck slipping on an ice tile over and over for about 16 beats, and then the game caught up and I died. <laughs> Nice three two. <laughs> One more banshee, that's good. As long as we didn't have to deal with another dire bat, it was fine. Okay, deep blue three. Right, deep blue three is a little tricky. <laughs> yeah, this is the unfortunate part about doing single zones now because um, it can be any one of the five main bosses. So you're probably going to see some repeats. Like we may or may not see uh, Coral Rift or uh, I think we've seen all the other ones. Ah, oh. that was a little got a little caught there. Yeah, deep blues is one of the bosses that scales the hardest as you go later into the zones. Um, in normal runs, it's not a big deal at all. In fact, the scaling is pretty non-existent. Because in normal runs, you're getting damage increases. And the way Deep Blue scales is some pieces start, um, some pieces get two HP. But when you're locked on one damage, that is a disaster. Yeah, when we're doing uh, all zones attempts, uh, we preferably want to get of Deep Blues and Death Metal out of the way as early as possible because those are by far the two hardest bosses. The other ones are pretty simple in comparison. But Spooty has a habit of having Deep Blues 5 at the end of his runs. <laughs> so we'll see if that happens in this, uh, this little marathon run. Yeah, he just wants to make sure everything's clear on the way out so he doesn't get jumped in case there's something by the stairs and he has room to back up. Okay, we actually get to Coral Rift. So he, Coral Rift's pretty simple. The uh, tentacles will attack here and there. He can knock them out depending on what pattern they give him. Uh, some of the tentacles have one HP, some of them have two. Actually, I think all of them have two in this version of the fight. But uh, after a while, all the tentacles and Coral Rift himself will attack. As long as he cl clears out the tentacles and leaves the gold in um, some relatively decent positions, the fight's pretty easy to manage. Because once the head's exposed, uh, it's, it's just a back and forth. All right, that's zone three. Nice zone three. You guys are allowed a little bit more clapping there if you want. <laughs> All right, zone four is the hardest zone. Yeah, this is the, the technical zone of the game. Uh, the layout is actually very simple for zone four maps. Uh, it's just a giant square all the way around. You start at one corner of the map, and the exit is in the opposite corner. The problem with the randomization is that there are so many different rooms closed off, and navigating them can be a real pain, especially depending on, there could be bat caves, there could be an ogre smacking you in the face. <laughs> yeah, that was just a fat finger act. Didn't mean to step right there. Yeah. And a lot of the enemies in this zone are extremely dangerous or have very 
weird ways to get around. Like you have the Blade Masters that'll parry your attacks and you need to cool off for a beat before you can hit them. Uh, there's the Harpies that can cover a lot of distance and, since they move every other beat and can cover up to three tiles. Uh, you'll see a couple different other mini bosses like the Ogre with the long reach and um, we might see a mommy or two. It's like, speaking of mommies. <laughs> He doesn't love his mommy. Yeah, those mo those mommies are really tough. Yeah, what he's gonna try and do for a lot of zone four is if it gets really crowded, he's gonna lure enemies back towards the start of the map and just kind of leave the gold in the corner. That way he has mo room to move around. I should also mention there's a new hazard in this floor. There's the, the green ooze. Uh, the green ooze shrinks you down. You can't attack. You can't do any kind of digging. If you try and do either, you drop your beat, multiplier, and die. And uh, the biggest problem with that is that there's these ooze golems introduced in zone four. And the first time you attack them, the ooze drops okay. onto the floor. Four, three, like I said, this is the hardest floor in the game. This is the fastest non-boss song and the hardest enemies. So I need focus for this. Pretty, pretty favorable that he's moving sideways first uh, when he starts these floors in zone four because in case the the uh, boss happens to be a red or blue dragon, um, he's able to get right on top of her, right below it, and that way he doesn't have to deal with his attacks. Thankfully, it was a nightmare, so he didn't have to worry. Just need these bats to get out of the way. That's a bat cave. That does not look like a nice exit room. That's a oh. trap. I got trapped there. Oops. Okay. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> this is, zone four can be really tilting because, yeah, you're forced to make these blind digs and there can be back caves and that was another little freeze there. Okay. Like, Hands off for a second. Let's <laughs> just, just. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I I've seen many of Spooty Rivers die in very interesting ways in zone four, like digging the wall. The ogre that's right behind the wall charges the swing. He tries to move back to avoid any hazards. The ogre just gives it to him before he can do anything else. <laughs> it, it's pretty amusing. Unfortunate, but amusing. Okay, four, two. Like you might notice there's also diagonal bounce traps uh, littered throughout here in that cave. Uh, he, he really wants to be mindful of those because he can, they can really uh, mess up his parity with the enemies or just have the enemy just spiral right into him. Yeah, we got a lot of back caves. This is pretty unlucky. Yep. Yeah, like I said, he's retreating to a safe space. That way he can deal with everything one time. Ooh, the confusion spell. I was not ready for that. Yeah, okay. but... uh, like I said before, this is the hardest zone in the game. I kind of expected a few deaths in here, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it together. And you'll all be much, much better at single claps <laughs> by the time we're done. I hope you all are really perfecting that technique. <laughs> knee. I just want to be as accurate as you are. <laughs> I need to back up, this is too dangerous. Yeah, the Ice Breath won't directly kill you. It'll just freeze you in place and you'll still be okay. But that just gives time for them to close the gap and womp on you there. Okay, there we go. We can fight this blue dragon in isolation now. See the dragon dance. Yeah, anyone who has problems fighting red or blue dragons, just do that little two by two dance. Okay. And 
that goblin bomber or the goblin digger over there digging through all the rooms. Uh, that could be a little scary because he could possibly be aggroing all the enemies in the other rooms. Okay, 4-3 again, here we go. Again, picking up diamonds does not invalidate low percent, so he can just take him and just have a free spot. Really scary with the ooze right there. The, the, the dra fire dragon breath extends with something like 20 tiles to the edge of the wall. So it, you can just get trapped so easily with them if you're trying to fight them horizontally. He's watching that armadillo. Uh, we saw a little bit of the armadillos in zone two, but the, these armadillos in zone four, they can actually move diagonally. Death Metal four. Death Metal four. This is another rough one. Death Metal four is about as hard as Death Metal three. Same deal, we're gonna try and kill one warlock and then kite the rest. Yeah, I believe the uh, different versions of the Warlock have different uh, priorities and movements. So the Beatles, uh, when we saw Death Metal 3. Okay. Oh. In the interest of keeping the Kings moving along, I'm just going to kill Death Metal 4 in the boss practice mode, and then we'll do Zone 5. <laughs> yeah, the Warlocks uh, have different, probably have different Oops. priorities compared to the Beatles that we saw during Death Metal 3. So cutting them around can get a little tricky because they might move in a a different way he might not be expecting if he's not paying attention. All right, there we go. There we go, zone four down. <laughs> All right, so zone four is the hardest part, just home free zone five. Yeah, zone five is the uh, the DLC zone since we're playing on Amplified. Um, it's actually easier than Zone 4, and I would probably see about the same difficulty as Zone 2, realistically, because you have this neat little wire mechanic. Um, whenever you're on the wire, you're charged up, and if you attack an enemy, and any, any other enemies are adjacent to that enemy, um, then you just get an electric shock through all of them. So it's really good for dealing damage. It's worth noting, though, that that zap does cause a flash of light, which can aggro extra enemies, so you got to be really careful about attacking on the wire. Ooh, metronome. Yeah, metronomes are pretty. Ooh, shop on mimic. <laughs> <laughs> that got me good. Well played. All right, so yeah, like, as useful as the wire is here, like, we don't want to just kill the skull across the hallway here because it would just completely cover the width of the hall in gold. And the exit room in Zone 5 is always the largest room, so you just got to find that and go for it. Yeah, the other rooms in Zone 5 are just kind of filled with other enemies and items. But if you can you can usually deduce from the layout of the map where the biggest room is and then just move from there. Probably the most difficult thing about the gold management in Zone 5 is gold that's actually left on the wire can be really difficult to spot and you might just accidentally step on it because you don't realize it's there. Oh, hello there, Minotaur. Okay, I need to back up here because, yeah, that Minotaur is opening that room. I don't want to deal with whatever's in it right now. All right, nothing threatening yeah, in there. Just an evil eye. Evil eyes don't even get close to you. They don't attack or move unless you get close to them. All right, 5-3. Ooh, nasty greeting there.
Yeah, the electric zombies are a little annoying because if you're not charged, you can't damage them unless you knock them off the wire. Ooh, green metronome. Ugh. You're getting a bomb. <laughs> yeah, he's just gonna go ahead and use one bomb. Like, that'll just cut it down significantly and it's very much well worth it. Because they teleport back to their initial spawn point whenever they're damaged, so it's it's worth using the bomb, just knock four off of them. All right, final and boss, there we go. Five. Fortissimo five. <laughs> like, there's, there's a pretty neat strat for uh, Fortissimo five. A little bit different loop from the earlier. So I think we have Fortissimo two earlier. Uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of a different loop. So we just kind of get him trapped in a spot where the uh, the skeleton is. And he, he tries to chase us, but he's not very smart. I'm gonna use Fortissimo to block the spawn point. Ready on time? time. And time. time. Oh. Good job, Scooty. <laughs> oh, what was the uh, time on that? <laughs> Uh, 27.41. Uh, okay, underestimate, I'll take it. I I could, I would have liked I, better, but it's okay. I mean, you did the probably impossible, especially, it's okay. Yeah, especially like um, the tech issues, like this is a game where you really have to just be completely in the zone, this category at least. So like the tech issues kind of brought me out of that. You guys probably saw me struggle a little bit when we came back, but yeah, I'm glad I was able to get back in the saddle and finish the run underestimate. So anyway, I want to give some shout outs to uh, my friends, uh, my family for all their support. Um, I want to shout out to uh, Aludra. You can see the Coda art right there on the couch. I actually never met her before AGDQ and she just showed up in the practice room, watched me practice for a while and came back the day, the day after with this amazing Coda drawing and it's insanely generous of her and I wanted to thank her on stage for that. Um, Thanks for uh, to the entire Necrodancer community, uh, as well as the dev team, um, Condor, and all of you. Um, you know, I'm so glad. Like so much of you, so many of you inspire me to push this game to its limits, and I hope I do the same back for you guys. Um, and um, yeah, I think lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Dikey. Um, he actually wanted to be here on the couch for this, but. Uh, um, wasn't able to make it. Um, unfortunately, uh, he, um, he, right before uh, the the registration for HDQ closed, um, received word that his grandfather had been diagnosed with cancer, and there was it was too late for them to do anything about it. They gave him six months. Then a week later. They said he only had two weeks, and then a week later he was gone. And I really would have liked to have him on the couch here, but um, you know, I totally understand. Um, so yeah, I want to really thank GDQ and the Prevent Cancer Foundation for doing what they can to hopefully keep pe other people from having to go through that same tragedy. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's all I've got. Um, thanks, Zelo, again, for providing commentary. You did great. Um, Thank Let's you for everything you do for the community because Spooty actually runs um, Crow, uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer Racing yeah, on weekdays. Um, and he organizes these just casual daily races that anybody can get in on. And it's just a great Yeah, time. I just want to emphasize if anyone thinks that running this game is fun, don't worry. Almost all of it is not even a tenth as hard as what you just saw here. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, there's actually a Junior League tournament coming up uh, organized by Condor coming up. Um, uh, later in January, that would be worth looking into. You have attained Necro Mastery. All right, and with that, I think I'm done here. All right, great job, Spooty. That was that was crazy, man. That was nuts. I want to get in one more donation real quick here. I have from Trollov one hundred and twenty-six dollars and forty-five cents. Uh, with right. With a comment, wanted to donate a cent for each clap, but I lost track. Can I get one more for him? There we go. 
All right, I'm getting word that we are ready with an interview now. It looks like with the Dead Cells runners, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to them. Hey, guys, I'm here with Church and Sarge, Big Honkenberger, and Skaz, who are the runners of the upcoming run, Dead Cells. It's going to be a really solid race. Now, Skaz, I know this game has been said by literally everyone that plays it <laughs> to be a kind of union between Metroidvania and roguelike. Can you tell us a bit about what that means? Yeah, so it's going to be a procedurally generated game where we know sort of what we have to do in each stage, but for each stage it's actually going to vary from every time we've played it before. So to an extent, we're just going in blind. Uh, but at the same time, there is a lot of stuff that we can have known from playing it in the past. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, nice. So I mean, I guess that means that there's probably a lot of randomness with this, right? Uh, we'll call you Studio, right, Studio? Uh, um, yeah. Yes. So uh, this actually relates to uh, how we had to find a seed for this run, since we're all playing on about the same seed. But we had to find a seed that had the same items we wanted, and we used different strategies, so it actually is not that easy. Uh, the right drops for the, sh uh, for the shop, the right rolls for the shop to make sure the correct shop appears. And we, we realized at the beginning we actually had like a one in 900,000 chance of finding that seed. Uh, so we actually had to use a mod to reduce it down to like a one in like 80. So one person wouldn't spend literally days yeah. just resetting over and over to find the maybe right run. Right. So I mean, if you hadn't done that, like what would be, you already mentioned a little bit, but in a race like this, in a one-time race where if you guys hadn't used that mod, like yeah, like what would that, what would that run have looked like? Uh, one of us would have gotten unlucky and taken like 20 minutes just to struggle to the exit with no extra items. Someone would have gotten the perfect run and probably made it out in like 13. And the other guy, you know, they'd do in the middle, yeah. somewhere in there. <laughs> Got it. Um, Church, you were telling me a little bit that you feel like each one of you has very different strategies going into this game. That, that really is surprising to me. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so one of the main things is uh, me and Studio are using pyrotechnics, uh, which is a ranged weapon. Uh, it's just a kind of direct line, whereas Skaz uses a more DOT, or sorry, not DOT, uh, AOE effect. Uh, so he just kind of throws like a Molotov on the ground, uh, which is a pretty different strategy for fighting the bosses. Um, additionally, um, just for some of the random uh, generation, uh, there's a lot of branching paths. And we all kind of have our own strategy for finding the exits that kind of differ from each other. Those preferred items, are those items you're starting with, or are those items that you're both individually going to be hoping for to find? Uh, those are ones we're going to be starting with, OK, yeah. got it, got it, got it. And have you each, so are you each starting with the same set of items, or and you just have preferences between those items, or how does that work exactly? Yeah. So with the mod, uh, we're going to be starting, all three items are going to start. Me and Studio are going to pick R2. Skaz is going to pick okay. R2. Got it, got it, got it, got it. And we do share the Assault Shield across yeah. uh, all okay. three of us. And what does that do? Uh, so normally it gives you a little uh, boost when you use a shield. Normally you just hold up a shield like this and you, you block an enemy. Uh, but the Assault Shield will give you a slight boost. And if you roll just after you press the shield, you will actually tumble, well not really tumble, just kind of glide along the ground incredibly quickly. So that's actually our main form of uh, horizontal movement. We just go uh, shield, roll pretty much nonstop throughout the entire run, and we just go really uh, fast because of that. Gotcha. Also, one more thing. Since it is technically being comboed with a roll, it gives us a lot of invincibility frames. So in addition to moving very fast and letting us keep our elevation, it also lets us be fairly safe throughout the entire run. Gotcha. S safe. Safe. <laughs> uh, until we hit the castle and we you know, carry something yeah. with us. So speaking of safety, what is the risk of death in this game, or what are the implications of that? I think the question is more what isn't the risk uh -huh, of death in this yeah. game? Um, yep. The first half of the run, we, we have pretty elevated stats thanks to this item smuggling we're doing at the start of the run. Um, but around the end of the run, since we've been going through it pretty fast and not scouring every map, we're pretty low on stats. So unless you hit the clock tower, the castle, and of course the final boss, pretty much everything can two-shot us if we're not lucky. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look at world record runs, they, they're at a point where most of the enemies can one-shot them. Uh, I think we'll have about 2,000 to 3,000 hit points Something for the finale. Like that. Most people I know finish with about 6,000, maybe to 7,000 on the yeah. first playthrough. In the newest patch, it's like 10,000. So <laughs> we're anywhere between like 25% to 15% of uh, most players' normal HP at that yeah. point in the run. Gotcha. Um, I'm, honestly, I want to take it back to what we were talking about preferences. That really interests me a lot, honestly. I want to go through each of you guys and just tell me why it is that you prefer the kind of item set that, that you're going with and why you think it's better than what your opponents are using. 
Uh, I think pyrotechnics is a little easier to use than firebrands because uh, firebrands is a lot of situational. Like, you really have to hope that they're in the right spot at the right time, whereas firebrands, you can just throw shots out wherever they are and get the damage mm -hmm. out as quickly as possible. Yeah, we, we both use uh, pyrotechnics. Uh, firebrands, uh, it's got a very long cooldown for me. Um, and pyrotechnics, I'm going to say, actually, I think it just looks cool. It's a cool animation. <laughs> it does look cool. Uh, and when it crits, it sounds great. It's, oh, yeah, just constant little dings that, that just make you feel good. Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, additionally, um, being able to just kind of do sustained DPS versus the boss if you get into the right position feels really good. Uh, but I think Skaz is a pretty good argument for Firebrands. So the reason, a big reason why I'm taking Firebrands in general is also something to do with the reason why we take different mutations. Um, I'm big on the mutation velocity, which means that um, I have to kill a lot of things throughout the stages to go faster. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the Firebrands is, is that its attack you can throw it out, it doesn't take much time to do that, and it does damage while you're off running away. Whereas the pyrotechnics, you kind of have to sit there and commit to your attack, because it's multiple attacks in a row. The burn doesn't last as mm -hmm. long. So it, it feeds into our different strategies as we go. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, let's head over to some Twitter questions, see what these uh, guys want to know from you. Um, so from Freezestar, we have the question, brutality, tactics, or survival? Which is more beneficial for the run, and what is your preference for casual runs? I don't even know what this means. Before you answer that question, can you just tell me, Church, a little bit about what these three different things are? Uh, so in the game, you have three different stats. So the brutality, tactics, and uh, survivability. And every time you increase one of those stats, uh, the items of the same color, you get increased DPS, or sorry, damage in general on those items. Uh, so for example, in our, the run, we're going to be using uh, pyrotechnics and two death orbs, uh, all of which are purple, which same, share the same color as tactics. So all of our damage is going to go through the roof okay. as we put uh, I, uh, stats into the tactics. Um, the other um, effect it has is that as you put points in them, you get more health uh, based on which category you put it mm -hmm. in. Um, but the more you put it in a category, the it's a diminishing a return. Got it. Cool. Um, the next big question, which I'm glad someone else ca asked because I want to know it. Decent Doysom asks, how did you come up with your names, each of you? Skaz, let's start with you. So my name, um, my real name, my initials are A and Z. Uh, and so when I was about mm, 13 years old, I really liked StarCraft. And I think you can figure out the rest. Mm -hmm. um, I really like burgers. <laughs> and I really just love a kind of like a big, juicy, honking burger yeah, that, yeah. you know, takes two hands. You that think makes it, two it, of us. gets real gross to eat real fast. But like, just, just saying, I really like burgers. That makes two of us. Uh, I'm a big fan of Rooster Teeth. Uh, they have a show called Rest vs. Blue. Uh, and when I was like 16, I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. So I just took uh, the leader of red team, leader of blue team. There you go. Nice. Makes sense. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Before we move on to the next run, I want to talk about some prizes we have right now. Um, first of all, uh, you may see right there behind a church, we have the Hot Ryu and Violent Ken Funko Pop. Um, those are those were donated by Captain Emoji and the Mysterious GX, and you can get in on it uh, right now for a minimum donation of five dollars. Here also we have the uh, Logitech G G502 Proteus Spectrum RGB gaming mouse donated by Iggy Zig. You can get in on that right now for a donation of ten dollars. And Church. Um, right behind you, if you will crane your neck to the left just a little bit, you will find that beautiful helmet, the uh, Doom Guy helmet replica, which is, was donated by Overworld Designs, and uh, you can get in on that for a minimum donation of $30. Also, in my hand, in my very clutches, it feels so nice, and you can get it too. Uh, it is a Dead Cells custom cassette tape soundtrack. You might think that these are the things of the past, but uh, I think cassette tapes are honestly just uh, up-and-comers. So you can get on, in on this for uh, $15. This was donated by Motion Twin. Thank you so much, Motion Twin. We also have, donated by uh, NES Jumpman, you can get in for a minimum donation of $10. Um, on NES, as well as six games for it. Uh, it's a really just solid selection of games. Uh, I think you'll uh, honestly have a lot of fun with it. Also, uh, you just saw Crypt of the Necrodancer being played, and 
we have a set of uh, six Perler key rings here for you with six of the different characters. Uh, I don't, let's see if I can name them all myself. I know this is Cadence right here, um, followed by, I think that's the mother. No, this is the mother. I don't remember her name. I don't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, oh, that was, I already went through that. Either way, that's, we got Cadence and the mother, a couple other ones, yeah, Coda. and Coda, who uh, you just saw being played. Coda, especially, like, can you imagine the bragging rights of this, saying, I have the Coda keychain, I have the keychain of the character where you have to move uh, twice as fast, you, you can't take any damage, you can't pick up any items. You'll be the belle of the ball with this one. Um, lastly, we have the HTC Vive Pro. My lord, do I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, this was donated by HTC Esports. You can get on, in on this and be eligible to win on it for $35. So, yeah, yep. Uh, keep your donations coming. I would say donate for Cuphead, but uh, we've already met that one. But we have so many other uh, incentives coming up. Definitely check up on the board for that. The very last one I want to mention is we got that there rifle that you saw before. Um, check it out. It's from Fallout. It's the Fallout 3 replica Gauss rifle donated by Bethesda, who you saw their interview earlier. Um, you can get in on that for a minimum donation of $125. Um, really cool stuff. So tons of prizes, tons of, tons of incentives, really fun stuff. So um, yep, coming up we have the Messenger. Uh, after that, we'll be seeing Dead Cells with this handsome trio. And then, uh, really, honestly, this is one of my fa favorite